Well, winners are grinners in 2021. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but in case you didn't notice, this year has been a record-breaking year. And not just for our record-breaking Australian women's swimming team who achieved their own stash of gold. The global commodities market has had a fantastic ride in 2021, and here in South Australia, we are reaping the rewards of record high copper prices, record high iron ore prices, sustained high gold prices and uranium prices that are on the move. And South Australia has a strong and diverse range of mineral commodities and global demand for our resources is up. Together, mining operators in our state reached a record 7.1 billion in mineral production and achieved 237 million in royalties for the benefit of South Australian people. Our mineral resources contribute more than 40% to our state's exports, and the jump in mineral sales by more than a billion this year was a major contributor to record high exports. Sustained high commodity prices are driving investment in exploration. Investors are flocking to the market with a number of explorers in our state undertaking recent successful capital raisings and IPOs. Backed by some more cash in the bank and easing of COVID restrictions in this year, explorers are back in the field undertaking surveys and drilling programs. An indicator of this increased activity is South Australia's mineral exploration expenditure reaching a seven-year high of $91.8 million. And congratulations to explorers for spending $30 million in the June quarter, the highest expenditure since 2013 for a quarter. So watch this space. The September quarter results are expected next week, and I'm sure they'll be on the up. A leading indicator of what's to come are the work approvals issued by the department. And this year, we've approved more than a million drilling metres, which is more than double the previous year when explorers were hampered by the impacts of COVID and unable to get out in the field. So this is a great indicator of the activity underway at the moment, and there's more to come. It probably comes as no surprise that BHP topped the list of explorers by expenditure as they're undertaking a significant resource definition program on the back of the stunning iron oxide copper gold discovery at Oak Dam in 2018. In addition to BHP's work, the top 20 mineral explorers by expenditure contributed 78% of exploration investment in the state. So our producers have had an exceptional year and mineral exploration is on the up. And the back, that's the backdrop for the, my presentation today. So let's go through the commodity highlights. South Australian copper producers hit a record high of 3.5 billion, smashing the previous record by more than a billion dollars. Copper is the state's major goods export, accounting for a quarter of the state's record-breaking 13 billion exports. And leading the charge was Olympic Dam with record high production of 205,000 tonnes. Moving on to exploration and expenditure for copper was 42 million, accounting for nearly half of all the state's exploration expenditure. With prices expected to remain high in the medium term, copper exploration is on the up. And we think there are plenty of opportunities to expand South Australia's copper inventory with that major gap between our giant Olympic Dam ore body and other deposits. Copper producers are reaching for the expansion packs in 2021, with near mine discoveries set to grow the state's inventory, which already sits at 66% of Australia's identified copper resources. Oz Minerals announced the green light for the prominent hill where a shaft expansion and construction is underway. Amongst the flurry of announcements from Oz, you might have missed their announcement of two shallow independent copper mineralisation targets with grades around 1% over two metres. And these brownfields exploration results 
indicate that there's potential to grow prominent hill beyond the current mineral resource. Moving a bit closer to home, and Hillgrove Resources continues to pursue extensions to the Caman 2 copper gold mine, with 17 kilometres of drilling in the first half of the year. And that included excellent results in May of 170 metres at just over 1% copper. Further results show that the mineral loads extend up to 500 metres below the base of the pit and remain open at depth, with excellent opportunity to grow the underground resource. Hillgrove's also embarking on technology discoveries and putting the continuous electric miner through its paces at the mine, ahead of the company's planned commencement of underground mining over the next year or so. And heading over to York Peninsula, Rex Minerals has more than doubled ore reserves for the Hillside Copper Project to almost 1 million tonnes of copper and just over 800,000 ounces of gold. An exploration standout for 2021 was the iron oxide copper gold discovery at Emmy Bluff Deeps by Coda Minerals, located 16 kilometres southwest of the world class Oak Dam discovery. Results from the parent hole intersected 35 metres grading in excess of 1% copper, with peak grades of 5.39% copper within the higher grade Bornite zones and 1.19 grams per tonne gold in the main chalcopyrite zone. Exceptional copper gold mineralisation encountered in ongoing drilling is beginning to reveal the multiple stack loads in a high grade, bornite dominated core surrounded by classic ISCG copper sulphide zonation. Nearby drilling completed at Emmy Bluffs Zambian style copper cobalt deposit is paving the way for an initial jork resource, which is expected in the December quarter, so keep an eye out for CODA's release on that. And CODA's used the geological surveys, iron oxide, copper gold, eastern Gawler craton prospectivity model, and our ADI co-funding, and we continue to engage with them to support the project. In addition to the work um, the resource definition work at Oak Dam and Emmy Bluff, there's been a number of excellent copper announcements, including those at Tasman Resources with a wide interval of lower grade copper mineralisation at the Lake Torrens ISCG project operated by FMG. And that included 321 metres downhole at 0.33% copper. And results also include strongly anomalous rare earth elements and anomalous golden palladium. And in the sedimentary copper space, Taruga's Waker Prospect delivered high grade near surface sediment hosted copper and DGO Gold reported successful intersections of Zambian style copper mineralisation at Panati Lagoon. So sedimentary hosted copper um, plays are taking the state by storm and attracting widespread interest. And Adrian Fabri will fill you in on that in the next talk. So moving on to the precious metals, and you guessed it, record high gold and silver production for the state of 952 and 65 million respectively. And that's primarily from our multi-commodity iron oxide copper gold mines, with Olympic Dam delivering their best ever gold production. And with the state's precious metal resources base continues to grow from ISCG deposits, gold only focused expenditure is minimal, despite persistent high gold prices over the past few years. And we're looking to turn this around, and a number of companies are growing opportunities from different types of gold plays in the state. And highlights from our gold explorers included Indiana Resources intersection for the Minos prospect of 38 metres at 6.54 grams tonne gold. Um, Marmota, uh, who reported their best ever one metre intersection of 165 grams per tonne gold for the Aurora Tank project. Uh, and have recently reported some success with their ADI co-funded project with gold in calcrete anomalies. Barton's got plans for further exploration at Tunkilia and Tarkula, and Alliance released a gold resource late last year and follow-up extension is underway. And drilling's also underway at Cobra's Woodner project. 
So plenty of upside for those projects to grow the state's gold inventory. Over to silver, and Investigator updated their resource estimate at Paris to 53 million ounces and have commenced further mine planning studies. Investigator resources also confirm the regional silver potential at Argos, Aries and Paris Dyke near the silver, Paris silver deposit. On the nickel front, and Western Aries wowed us in June last year with extensive, massive to disseminated sulphide mineralisation at their Sahara prospect. And they followed up with the release of a discovery intersection of 104 metres at 0.21% nickel and 0.12% copper from 145 downhole. And that included intervals of up to 1.4% nickel. So this result is a proof of concept demonstrating the region's potential to host economic nickel copper mineralisation. And it's a significant new exploration play for South Australia. And over the past 15 years, investment in nickel has totaled, totaled just 20 million. We don't know enough about the geology, and there's a huge role for the Geological Survey to play to de-risk this space. And that's one of the reasons why we support the project with ADI co-funding and why the Gawla Phase II project is happening in this frontier exploration territory in the central western Gawla Craton. No record sales this year for iron ore due to lower volumes. However, high prices ensured the state's iron ore producers benefit from high iron prices, including Cymec mining and smaller operations that recommenced at Can Hill and Peculiar Knob. And in the news this week, Peak Iron was granted a mining lease for the buzzard hematite deposit adjacent to the larger hawk's nest deposits. So who knows how long iron ore prices will hold, but our state's explorers are making the most of it. And South Australia's got more than 15 billion tonnes of bagnetite and plenty of upside for iron ore projects in the state. And highlights include Brownfields exploration at Cymex Middleback Ranges and Magnetite Mines announcing an initial ore reserve and pre-feasibility studies for their Razorback project. And explorations continued at Lodestones, O'Leary Flats and Sinus Steel's undertaking extensive resource drilling at its Billaroo project. So South Australia has been powering clean energy around the world for more than 30 years from our uranium deposits, which total a quarter of the world's resources. Uranium production reached 5,500 tonnes, worth 480 million, and that's from BHP's Olympic Dam and Heathgate's Four Mile ISR mine. And the sun is rising for uranium exploration after a decade of subdued prices. The enduring demand for clean energy means many new reactors are in the pipeline, prices are picking up, explorers are back into it. And to support their honeymoon uranium restart project, Boss Energy has ramped up regional exploration activities to expand the resource base. And they've recently completed seismic surveys with the support of ADI co-funding, identifying five new targets. And alligator resources are also ramping up activity at the Samfire project to better define and understand the Blackbush deposit. So critical minerals are in the spotlight for their high technology and clean energy applications. And the state has a number of projects and potential for new and emerging markets. The state has also long been known for its supply of zircon from the world's largest zircon mine, Jacinth Ambrosia. Ambrosia, and this is largely used in the ceramics industry. The Sivior Graphite Project is leading the charge with its battery grade graphite project, and the Great White Kaolin Project, which also hosts Hellasite that has nanotechnology applications, and that's in assessment with the department at the moment. And the state has a number of other critical mineral resources, including magnesite, cobalt, and rare earths, and possibly other commodities that we actually don't even realise yet. So if you've got a shopping list, come and talk to us and we'll see what we can find. 
So South Australia is excited to be a player in the rare earth space now with Australian rare earth announcement of a jork resource for the Copamara rare earth deposit. And the discovery of this ionic clay hosted deposit was the result of a review of historical drill core in our GSSA operated drill core library. And many other explorers are casting fresh eyes across old and new exploration plays around the state for these critical commodities. So I'd like to wrap up today, and thanks for sticking with me on the ride. It's been a whirlwind of fast facts there. Um, and thank all the people who provided the, the beautiful photos that are featured in my presentation today. And these are featured in the Mineral Exploration publication, which also contains much of the content I've shared today. So stay tuned to our socials and we'll push the report links out to you all. And all the best with your mineral adventures in South Australia in 2022. And I look forward to following your success. And please keep talk, talking to us at the Geological Survey. We're here to help. Thank you.